uh, were libertarian on, on economics, business women and so forth, but also libertarian in terms of controlling their own lives and their own bodies and so forth. That was key in Colorado. More generally, I'd like to step back for a second. Uh, I'm a reporter and an, and an analyst, uh, and I think we're understating to some extent uh, the magnitude of this thing tonight. Here, here, is, here is a guy who got reelected at a time of where the unemployment rate is officially at seven, I think, 7.9 percent. Uh, he's been hammered uh, back and forth for his handling of the economy. And yet this, is, this seems to me to be an, uh, an even more emphatic uh, uh, vote of confidence in the Democratic Party's view of what to do in a time of crisis economically than we may even quite understand. Uh, at a time, in tough times, the American people said, "We like uh, the we're the we're all in this together message. Uh, we trust that more than we trust what the Republicans have been saying." And I take that not only from the presidential results that we've seen so far, but from the election of senators, particularly Elizabeth Warren in Massachusetts. That's going to turn out to be, in its own way, just as symbolic as the president's victory tonight. You know, it's so powerful, Howard, and I completely agree, because really I look big. at the elements now. Uh, income inequality, as, as Ed Schultz was right. mentioning earlier, the fact that people really do, there's an unfairness in our society, right. especially coming from tax policy. The fact that people really do believe that Wall Street needs to be reined yes. in, it needs to be tamed to mm -hmm. the national interest. These are important issues, and, and the fact that the federal government must intervene in cases like the auto industry. So we have a support here of aggressive industrial policy, uh, progressive income taxing, uh, well, and, and, and by the way, regulation and, and by All the way, Chris, and by the way, Chris, Ob Obamacare and Obamacare, uh, and Obamacare which uh, le le the Mitt Romney said on his very busy first day, one of the things he's going to do is begin unraveling uh, the president's Affordable Care Act. Well, th that ain't going to happen. Uh, and, and, and I think that's very, very important when we step back and look at this. This is really a very historic moment, both on the policy grounds and the demographic demographic grounds we've been we've been uh, talking about. In a way, the the uh, over the 270 thing kind of snuck up on us about 45 minutes mm -hmm. ago, and and we didn't we don't really realize what a what a Rubicon we've crossed here. And I don't think it's like the last election, as you say, it's a much more emphatic statement. Last election yes. was about inspiration and hope and really good speeches that inspired people like me and so many Americans. This is about policy that was put into effect. Right. right. It was also, Chris, it was also about rejecting George, the eight years of George W. Bush. Right. Don't forget. That was. This, this, is, this was a referendum. Uh, th this was the referendum that Mitt Romney wanted on Barack Obama. And guess what? Barack Obama won the referendum. Uh, and that's pretty darn emphatic. It's almost like a European, I hate to use that phrase because it's in disrepute, but the idea of having an actual, uh, no seriously, an yeah. actual agenda and a party program. And you've just laid it out. A very clear, aggressive regu well, uh, reg I'm regulation of Wall Street. A very strong effort, when necessary, for industrial policy to go in and deal with the failure of an auto, indus an auto industry or another industry like that. And of course, a redress of economic unfairness due to tax system, progressive well, taxation. I, I, Chris, I like, I like a lot of other people said that Obama didn't, uh, the president didn't sketch out enough what he wanted to do in a second term, and I suppose that. To some extent, that was true. On the other hand, what's happened here is that everything he did in the first term has been validated. So in that sense, uh, the president was right. He said, let me keep doing what I've been doing. That was the question that was posed in the election. Uh, and and he, it looks like he's winning pretty resoundingly with some very interesting and important outriders in the Senate, and particularly Elizabeth Warren. She beca became the complete uh, bet noir of, of Wall Street, of the moneyed interests. They took one look at Elizabeth Warren and said, we don't want any parts of that woman. Unfortunately for them, they had Scott Brown on their side, and she ended up rolling over him. So is this campaign, as we see it now, perhaps a 50-50, slightly better advantage than the popular vote, but a clear electoral vic victory that could take the president well past 300 electoral votes? Will this be a rejection of what Romney was offering, a business person's approach to government, a lower tax rate for the top people, 
basically deregulation, especially in EPA and things like that, a less re regulation generally, a real rugged sort of cowboy capitalism he was offering. Is it, has it been rejected tonight? Well, Chris, first of all, again, to step back, Mitt Romney is arguably the worst possible person to carry a message of the virtues of the free market to working people. Uh, he was the very embodiment of the guy up on the hill. Uh, he wouldn't release his tax returns. He didn't work for a, for a company that made things. He worked for a company that flipped other companies. What the Republicans need to do when they stick to their message about the virtues of individuality in the free market is find somebody who can embody and explain how that very powerful force, very productive force, can be harnessed for the good of working people. Okay. Mitt Romney never made that case, and especially in the absence of his ability to do so, the president said, what I've been doing has not worked spectacularly yet, but I'm on your side, and that was more than enough uh, to really power, I think, the Democrats for years ahead now. I see, I see the Democrats not necessarily establishing any kind of uh, you know, mastery of the land. Don't forget the House still is in Republican hands, uh, and not all the President's policies were popular, but in the absence of a counter-argument, okay. counter uh, the president really won convincing. Well said, Howard. Back to Rachel. Howard, Thank appreciate you. that. I want to tell you about two other things that have been decided tonight. Uh, one is a historic decision on marriage equality. Um, when marriage equality, same-sex marriage rights have gone before the state's 32 previous instances in America, uh, the record for the gay rights side of it has been 0-32. That losing streak has been broken tonight with the state of Maryland voting to uphold same-sex marriage rights. Marriage equality uh, in the state of Maryland. Uh, there's a few other states that are voting on that tonight, but Maryland is the one that is called thus far. I also want to say that both, both Colorado and Washington have voted yes on legalizing the possession of small amounts of marijuana. Uh, Colorado and Washington, both pro-marijuana legalization uh, votes tonight. Both of those have been called. We now want to bring in Victoria DeFrancesco Soto uh, to talk with us about the importance of the Latino vote tonight uh, in this overall victory for the president where it was most crucial and um, if it ended up being anything other than we expected it to be. Was there any surprises uh, in the Latino vote tonight? Victoria, thanks very much for joining us. How do you see tonight? Thanks, Rachel. Well, what we've seen is our expectations surpassed. So the record of any Democratic president receiving the Latino vote was 72 percent with President Bill Clinton. Tonight, we saw from the Latino Decisions Electoral Eve poll that number go up to 75 percent for President Obama. Mm -hmm. And what we saw was key support of the Latino community in Colorado, in Nevada, and in Florida. In Nevada and in Colorado, we saw close to 90% of the Latino vote go for Democratic President Barack Obama. Now, in terms of Florida, we knew that the Cuban electorate would likely support Mitt Romney, and we saw that at about 64%. But the big surprise for me was seeing that overwhelming support in the I-4 corridor in the Orlando area of Puerto Ricans for Barack Obama. We still didn't know how, how the Puerto Puerto Rican community was going to cleave, whether they were going to sit this out or go independent, but they resoundingly came out for President Barack Obama. Victoria, thank you very much for that. Obviously, we're going to be getting more detail as we get more definitive results uh, from Florida, from Nevada, from other places. Thank you. We'll be watching that closely. Uh, I can tell you that as of 1215, which is roughly five minutes ago, we do know that Mitt Romney has not called President Obama uh, to concede in this race. Again, we know that his uh, campaign is contesting all of the networks having called Ohio for President Obama. Uh, we continue to watch further results come in right now. In Ohio, there's 82 percent of the vote in. Uh, and you can see how it breaks down there. The reason for the confidence in the call, as explained by NBC News, is because in moderate and Democratic-leaning uh, districts, there's a significantly larger share of the vote outstanding right now as compared to what is still expected to come in from Republican-leaning parts of the state. Uh, this does not seem to be a real fine line of a call, which is probably why all the different networks have made it. Chuck Todd is with us uh, now more on, in terms of what we're expecting um, from, from the other states, but also on the continued controversy with the Romney campaign not conceding Ohio. Chuck? Hey, I'm sorry, I was just, I'm a, uh, I've got voices in my head and my name is not Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I, you know what, I couldn't help it. I've really tried to bite my tongue about that uh, individual, uh, but I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, a couple of things, first of all, one of the reasons why uh, we were felt comfortable calling Ohio um, were, were a couple of uh, important numbers and I'm just gonna write them up here. Uh, one is the number 750. Uh, 
and one is the number 140. The point is, in moderate to strong Democratic counties, there's about 750,000 vote uncounted when we called it, and in moderate to strong red counties, or Romney counties, there's 140,000 votes. You can do the quick math there. Obviously, it's not going to go 100% either way, but you can see that there's a lot more to be gained here. He already has the raw vote lead. He's pulled back ahead there, and most of it's in Cuyahoga. But I want to go to a couple other states. Uh, the rest of our FLOVA, if you will, Florida and Virginia. I can tell you, I've gone in, we have looked at every remaining precinct that is left. Again, the president has a lot more votes, it looks like, that are, are coming from counties that he is winning versus uh, enough vote that's counties that, um, that Romney is winning. It's going to be close. It's going to be probably anywhere from one full percentage point maximum to 1.2%, but it looks like right now you'd rather be President Obama than Mitt Romney, but we are going to wait until all of the vote is in, and I, you're, you may see something like a parent winner, if you will, Rachel. And then finally in Florida, Florida is the, uh, is the other one here. Again, same story, um, but even more so, if you will, uh, and that is when you look at what's left and the vote count that's left, it is in a lot of very strong Obama counties. I'm going to read it to you now. Miami-Dade, there's still a lot. 17% of the vote remains. St. Lucie County, it's a, that blue, little spot of blue there uh, is there. Broward County still got some 3%. There, there is a few Romney counties, but they're smaller ones. Baker, there is one decent-sized county with Romney vote left. It's Brevard, but it's a county he's only winning 56-43. Compare that to Broward, where there's still some vote left, but that's a county he's winning 67-32. But I, I want to show you one other thing. Thing, by the way, about, uh, let me get this to go back, to show you how this really was a, a game of, of, of margins, if you will, in Florida. I just want to show you how the map doesn't change colors uh, from 2008 in counties to 2012, that really this was just a, just a game of, uh, as one Republican consultant called it, money ball, if you will. Here's the 2008 county map. You have to look really carefully to see anything that went from blue to red. A couple did, and I'll tell you right up there, this right up there at the end of the I-4 quarter, that's it. Basically, what the Obama campaign did was they ran up their margins. They ran up their margins. Here it is again. You see two little counties up there, Volusia uh, up there and, and, and right north of it, and that's it. And everything else is the same, if you will. And it's about those margins I was telling you about in Orange County. I think we have to stop calling the I-4 corridor a fully swing part of the state. I think that what's happening, the I-4 corridor is starting to trend Democratic. Not by a lot, but it's starting to trend, demograph, uh, uh, trend demographic, Democratic. That is, a, that is a potentially large problem for Republicans long term in the state of Florida, at least in presidential years. Chuck Todd, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Chris, mm -hmm. Jan Chris Jansing is with us from Romney headquarters uh, in Boston. Uh, Chris, do we expect Mitt Romney uh, to concede tonight? What are you hearing there? Well, that is the $6 million question, and we were told about 15 minutes ago that the pool was going to be brought to see the motorcade. This hotel where he has been in a suite is attached to the convention center, and that they were going to leave in some time between 15 minutes to an hour. Again, that was 15 minutes ago, and since then, there's been nothing but confusion. People are just waiting to see and to hear what's going to happen. I would just make one more point, and this is totally speculative, but it's a possibility. You'll remember that at the beginning of the night, Rachel, we were told by the Romney campaign that he had written an acceptance speech and that was it. <laughs> Nothing else had been done. There is always the possibility, as we've been talking about, first there is coming to the realization with the numbers that you have indeed lost and then you have to get your thoughts together and decide what you're going to say. But right now, as far as we know, the pool that is covering him is waiting outside and waiting to see the movement of the motorcade, which is basically just coming across the street, Rachel. Chris, in terms of the, the mood in the room and how people are responding to the news that the Romney campaign is not conceding Ohio specifically, even after all the networks had called it, what was the sort of, was there any sort of palpable reaction to that or any sort of change in what it felt like there? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> tremendously so. And it's been up and down, up and down, because the, a, a literal pall went over the room when first uh, Barack Obama was called for re-election. And then they heard that there was a possibility that there would be a challenge in Ohio. And people were literally screaming at the top of their lungs. And they were watching as various... Uh, and they, they keep changing, by the way, what they're showing on those screens. They've been showing different networks, and they were going from network to network to network and showing how basically it was done. Whether or not Ohio goes for Barack Obama or Mitt Romney, that the numbers are with the president. And every time those numbers would come up and that explanation would be given, they would boo. And at one point, people came in with boxes of small American flags. And for a while, it was completely quiet in here. And a lot of people were waving flags. I, as far as I can tell, certainly no one has left. They want to see Mitt Romney. But it has been an emotional roller coaster from them, from cheer to booing to utter silence, Rachel. We saw the location for the um, Ohio Republican Party empty out. We saw the Ohio Secretary of State, who is a Republican and a, has been a Romney supporter, um, say that he would not be back to the podium after saying that uh, everybody could see the way that the results were going in Ohio. Um, it, is a, it is a little weird that Ohio seems to be done with this story, um, but Boston doesn't seem to be done with this story. They're still not putting anybody out from the campaign in order to explain the, the basis of they're, con they're, they're contesting this? They're still not trying to, to lobby you, for example, uh, in terms of how to get their side of this story on the air? Well, it's interesting to watch because I've also been watching a lot of the reporters who have been on the campaign trail uh, the entire year, and they're looking around to try to find someone from the campaign to talk to, and they're not having any luck. And, of course, we've been working the phones and, and emails, and everybody's comparing notes, but no, they're not putting anybody out, and we keep, kept getting different reports. I think I reported within the last hour we were told John McCain was going to take the stage, uh, and then we were told that Paul Ryan had actually gotten into a motorcade and come over here to the convention center, stepped out of his van, got back in, and turned around and went back again. And that was probably, oh, almost an hour ago now. So there have been a lot of conflicting uh, pieces of physical, uh, verifiable information, a lot of speculation, but definitely uh, nothing from the campaign that would indicate one way or another exactly what they're doing, except what I reported to you earlier, which is they said 15 minutes to an hour and that was now maybe 20 minutes ago. Chris Jansing, thank you. We will be talking with you again shortly as this becomes more clear over the course of the night. Thank you for that. I want to bring now Pete Williams in. NBC News' is Pete Williams to talk about the legal side of this. Uh, if there does end up being some sort of formal legal challenge uh, in Ohio, what that would consist of and what we would expect to, what, what we'd need to see out there is true in the world before we knew that, could, that sort of thing could happen. Pete? I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows for this reason. Uh, everybody has, every state had, until Ohio did away with its law, a, a, a state law that spells out how you contest an election. And remember, this was a key part of what happened in the Bush v. Gore legal fight in 2000. Uh, Ohio decided recently to do away with that state law. So you cannot contest an election under state law. You can go to federal court and contest an election, but that's no man's land because because there are no federal laws governing how states carry out elections because states conduct their own elections, as we, as we know. So it doesn't mean you can't contest the election in court. It just means that it's going to be a little harder and it's going to be uncharted territory. So, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly possible in Ohio. We don't know on what grounds it would be contested. And remember that we won't even know what the final election returns are in Ohio until all those provisional ballots are counted and that won't be done until toward the end of the month. So we won't even know if there's an automatic recount in Ohio, if it's within the margin that would trigger an automatic recount. We won't know that until toward the end of the month. One other note here, Rachel, um, you know, another state where there might have been trouble is Pennsylvania because of all the confusion over these, uh, whether, what voter ID you had to show. The Pennsylvania 
Republican Party has put out a statement congratulating all the winners, saying it was a hard-fought campaign, um, recognizing the state for the great uh, campaign that they won there, patting everybody on the back. No indication in here that they are saying, you know, we was robbed mm -hmm. and that they plan to mount any kind of a legal challenge. That's fascinating. Pete Williams, we will keep, uh, we'll stay in touch with you um, as this contested uh, Ohio result uh, continues to unfold tonight. Thanks for being with us, Pete. Okay. I appreciate it. Um, one note I will say is we're still waiting on uh, Nevada. It's one of the other races that's still out. It's too close to call. One of the things, nice things about Nevada is you can still vote for um, none of these candidates, which right now has 1% of the vote uh, in Nevada. There was an election for mayor of Moscow early in that democracy in which none of the above won. <laughs> and they had to rerun the election twice to get a winner. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to recap what's going on in terms of this race being called for President Obama, but the Romney campaign refusing to concede the state of Ohio, which is the state that put President Obama over the top. Meanwhile, Virginia, Florida, Nevada, Colorado all remain still too close to call. There's a lot still going on. Senate races to talk about, governor's races to talk about, and some interesting ballot measures making history tonight. Uh, more ahead. Stay with us.